Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Shook. I make videos for NBA. I also cover a bunch of other stuff. Um, all these videos get posted, I don't know what this is, um, on this subreddit called DF Sports. Um, you can find my post, my username is Shook right here. Um, I make updates with all throughout the day with all the news that comes out. Like today, Hart got expected in. I got off Grimes, got off RJ, made everyone aware of that. Um, so check that out. You can also talk strategy here and stuff like that and ask me questions and I'll always re reply to you. Um, and then if you ever need to get a hold of me privately, you can do so on Twitter. Uh, my Tory is uh, I just my Twitter is to at Tory Langley one nine nine two. So let's go over my lineups. I broke even today. Uh, maybe maybe won a little bit of money because of showdown, but um, main slate went just horribly wrong for me. But um, I've only had th one losing day in the playoffs, so this will be a. I think I won a little bit of money. Had like three four hundred dollars in entry fees one three four hundred dollars back so this will be the first i had one losing day one today being a break-even day um but before we get into my lineups if discord is something you're interested in i'll have a link to that down below where i have you know a bunch of in-depth content i have player pools for cash and gpps and tournaments i give you guys four players to play each day um a, a whole player pool with cash plays and stuff like that so Going over my lineup today, I had a core of, today my core was Derek White, Smash, obviously, you pretty much just play Derek White today. Kevin Durant, a very, very underwhelming, um, unfortunately. Al Horford, he was good, and then Jared Allen, he was very good as well. So, three out of four on the core, I don't consider Kevin Durant getting there. Even though he got to 5x, I, I really don't consider that getting there for a spend up. So 3 out of 4 on the court. And then I rounded out my lineup in this one with um, Donovan Mitchell, um, Terrence Mann, Tory Craig, and DeAndre Ayton. Just Ayton got into massive foul trouble. Uh, just unbelievable. Uh, let's go over my other lineup. So same thing. I played the core per usual. You see Derek White, Kevin Durant, Al Horford, Jared Allen. Um, and then in this lineup, I went with Marcus Smart, um, Jalen Brunson, who I thought was one of the best plays in the slate for tournaments, Eric Gordon, and Zubac, um, who didn't close, barely played, which, um, I mean, I guess I'm not shocked they didn't close with him, but I thought there was a high chance that they wouldn't go small, which is which is fine. It's whatever. Um, so, just an L day on the main slate. Um, and then showdown slate, this is where I absolutely nuked. Um, as you can see, just a very, very good day on showdown. The showdown core that I had for today was Kevin Durant, Kawhi Leonard, and Tory Craig. They absolutely nuked. So, showdown core, just a, a huge success. Salvaged my day. Um, and, yeah, let's go over this three-game slate. I think this three-game slate looks absolutely phenomenal. Pricing is down. You can pretty much play whoever you want to. Um, I'll try to, if you guys want me to, I'll try to keep doing my best of like, I really like this guy, but would I rather play this guy or this guy or this guy? Uh, I'll try to do my best. Um, I think that'll really help you guys. So, going over the Lakers, I think, you know, LeBron AD, personally for me, I personally don't have too much interest. Like, I, I feel like personally for me in my one lineup, it's going to be hard for me to get to Anthony Davis and LeBron James. Just because you have, like, look at this. You have Jimmy Butler at sub 9K. You have Drew Holiday with no Giannis at 8 2. You have Anthony Edwards at sub 8K. You have Cat at 7.5. You have Bam at 7 4. It's just like. I think the balanced build is just going to be extremely overpowered tomorrow with the pricing. Now that doesn't mean you don't you can't you don't have to get to these guys. I think Anthony Davis and LeBron James are both good plays, but for my personal build, I'm going to be going more towards that mid range. So Anthony Davis at the top. I mean, clearly, 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 he has a tremendous ceiling. Like he, if I had to guess, who would be the highest scorer on this slate? I would say it's probably, outside of Jokic, it's probably going to be Anthony Davis. So, 
I think Anthony Davis does look good. Um, I just think the mid-range is just completely, completely underpriced on this slate. So I really like Anthony Davis. It's up to you if you think the value is good enough to get there. I think he's just going to absolutely feast in this spot. So I, I think AD looks good. LeBron James, I think we get high 30s minutes from him. I think he's a very, very safe play at sub 10K. So I do like both the top Lakers here. Um, I think, you know, D'Lo, Austin Reeves, I think they are now playable at their respective prices. Minutes-wise for D'Lo, I think we get mid-30s minutes from him. Now, in the, in the first game against Minnesota, they did go to Dennis Schroeder because he was struggling a bit. I don't think that'll happen again. I'm pretty sure they're just going to ride with D'Lo. So, at 5'8", I think he's a solid play as well. Now, Let's go over pivots. Would I rather play D'Lo or would I rather play Bobby Portis? I'd rather play Bobby Portis. Would I rather play D'Lo or would I rather play Brooke Lopez? I'd rather play Brooke Lopez. Would I rather play D'Lo or MPJ? I'd rather play MPJ. So trying to do stuff like that, I think will help you guys. But I still think he's a pretty solid play. You know, Austin Reeves, they're going to completely rely on. Um... He's been phenomenal, been very, very efficient. You know, his usage has been good as well. So I think he's a reasonable play. I would prefer playing D'Lo over Reeves, but I think they're both solid plays in the mid-range. And then Rui, they're closing with him. He's played 27 and 30 minutes in back-to-back -back games, must-win games, obviously. So I think he's a solid value. I think he's going to be one of the more popular value plays in the slate. I mean, for good reason. Um, it's a hole that they, need fi they needed to fill. He's stepped into this role. He's done very, very well in this role. And I think they're going to keep relying on him to play high 20s to around 30 minutes. So I think Rui is a pretty good value. I assume he's going to be popular. I think it's warranted for good reason. Dennis Schroeder, I don't have too much interest in. I mean, if he continues to play around 20 minutes, you can go there. But once again, another value play that I'd rather just much play over Dennis Schroeder at a similar price tag is Gabe Vincent. I think Gabe Vincent is just a light years better play than Dennis Schroeder. So, and then we have Vanderbilt at 3-9. He's been god, god awful. Um, playing alongside AD just absolutely kills his usage. So, I think he's playable for value now that the price came down. He does have like 30 fantasy point upside when he does have these like absolute explosion games like he can do this so it's fine for tournaments it's just hard for me to go there on my one lineup but i think he's an okay value play beasley's minutes have been completely cut down so it's hard for me to go there and john Morant we have is questionable so i do not expect him to play here so if he's in this is what i will say i find it hard for me to go to john Morant if he's in i just don't think he's going to be a hundred percent and then it's just a downgrade to everyone else. Like, I, I'm not going to pay 9-3 for Jaron Jackson Jr. with John ja, ja Moran in. I'm not going to pay 8-4 for Desmond Bain with John ja Moran in. With the other players underpriced in the slate, Ty Jones would be out of play. Dylan Brooks would be overpriced. Luke Kennard would be overpriced. Xavier Tillman, I think, is still fine. Got a foul trouble early last game. Still only played 22 minutes. Playable for value. But there really wouldn't be much if John ja Moran's in. Would definitely be my least favorite team on the slate. So... If John Morant's out there, that does change. So, the biggest beneficiary outside of Tyus Jones when John Morant is off of the court is Jaron Jackson Jr. Jaron Jackson Jr.'s usage rates go way, 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 way up when John Morant is off the court. You would think it would be Bane, and you would be mistaken if you think that. It, it's actually John, or Jaron Jackson Jr. who gets a huge bump, but no John Morant. So... I know last slate I said I, I wouldn't play um, Jaron Jackson Jr. And he proved me wrong. Um, stayed out of foul trouble. Lakers are second in the league at drawing fouls. If he can stay out of foul trouble with no John Morant, I'm fine paying this price tag for him. I am. I, like I said, I'd rather play like the Timberwolves guys or the um, Miami guys or the Milwaukee guys over him. But I'm fine paying the price for him if John Morant is, is out just because his usage rate without John Morant is just really really good i think bane becomes playable but once again not a standout like another situation i'd rather just play cat for a thousand dollars cheaper i'd rather play ant for a thousand dollars cheaper so i think he's fine um but doesn't stand out to me i, I think the main guy that that stands out to me the most here is going to be tyus jones at 6.7k he's going to start i think we get high 30s minutes from him 
He's really, really, really productive. Um, I remember during the regular season, I was still jamming in Tyus Jones when he was like 7K without John Morant. So I think he's a pretty, pretty good play, assuming no John Morant. Dylan Brooks is a black hole. All he does is shoot, does have a ceiling when he's hitting his shots. Sure, you can go there if Jaws out. I wouldn't even consider it if he's in. Not going to go to, I guess if Jaws out, you can go to Kennard. I think they'll lean on him a bit more heavily here. And once again, a guy that does have a very, very high ceiling when he does hit his shots. So I guess they do have some some interest in Kennard if John Morant's out. And Xavier Tillman got into early foul trouble. Um, only played 22 minutes, lost like five minutes or so. So would have played like 25-ish, um, a, a playable value. But definitely am concerned about foul trouble for Xavier Tillman and Jaron Jackson Jr. Um, in one of the, against one of the teams that draws the most fouls in the league. And then you're probably going to see more run for David Roddy, um, who I think probably plays like low teens minutes. I mean, I, I think it's okay as like a dart for tournaments. Like if I was playing 150 lineups, maybe, just maybe I get some, but um, that's just like a complete dart throw for tournaments. I think you're just going to see um, Tyus Jones play a ton of minutes on a Miami. So no Tyler Harrow. Unfortunately, he's probably going to be done for the season. So you're just going to see insane usage here for Butler and Bam. I think both look phenomenal. Butler, 8-9, it's just too cheap. I think Tyler Harrow out just absolutely helps him a ton. He's going to have to take more shots. He's going to play huge minutes. I absolutely love Jimmy Butler tomorrow. I think he looks great. Bam at a bio, 7-4. No Giannis on the other side. Still has to deal with Brook Lopez, but I expect huge minutes from him. He is also too cheap with no Tyler Hero. These two are just going to dominate everything. I really like Bam. Max Struess, I expect huge, huge minutes from him. Another guy that when he's hitting his shots does have a ceiling, but does can do this to you. Now at the price of 5.5K, this will absolutely kill you. So a fine tournament play, but just be careful if he's not hitting his shots. He does have a very low floor. And then the value play that I really like on this slate is going to be Gabe Vincent. I know he's been just God, God, God awful. But without Tyler Hero on the court, that changes a ton. They're going to... They're going to ask him to do a ton more offensively. His, he's going to get a minutes bump as well. I think Gabe Vincent right now, per, personally to me, stands out as one of the best value plays on the slate. I really like Gabe Vincent for value. Kevin Love, it's tricky. So, played 23 minutes last game. Really good point per minute guy. <clears throat> In the past, they've shown that they can just bench him. Like, I would not be shocked if he played 23 minutes tomorrow or if he played 10. So, just a tournament play. I think if he's going to get any ownership on this slate, it's a horrible play. I think, you know, if he's going to get no ownership, then yeah, absolutely fire up, take some shots on Kevin Love. I think that's completely fine. Um, but going to depend on ownership with Kevin Love. And then Kyle Lowry. Um, if he plays minutes wise, I have no idea. It seems like he's still injured. I, I, I have no idea. It's also going to depend on the starting lineup. Like, I don't even know who the Miami Heat are going to start. If I they started Duncan Robinson in the second half, he he barely played though. If we take a look at the rotation, uh, if you guys don't know what this is, this is popcornmachine.net. You can look at every team's rotation. So they started him in the second half. Uh, where is Duncan? And he only played one rotation. Um, kind of confused by that. Only at a six minute stretch. Um, you saw a closing lineup, Caleb Martin, Max Struess, Gabe Vincent, Bam Adebayo, and Jimmy Butler. So, I think they're going to need Caleb out there. I think they're going to want Struess out there. They're definitely going to want Gabe Vincent out there. And they're going to want Bam Adebayo out there. Um, I don't know what the closing lineup would be. I, I really don't. I, I think one of Caleb or Struess might not close. If I had to guess, they would. Um, but... I don't know who... Oh, forgot to go over... Never mind. Um, I don't know who they're going to start. I think Kyle Lowry is probably my best guess. Um, or Duncan Robinson. If Duncan Robinson does start at the flat min, I, I think you can definitely go there. I, I don't know how many minutes he's going to play. I, I really don't. I think they should be playing him more. I think they should be playing him 20 minutes game. Um, if they start him, we'll see what projections have. But yeah, he would definitely be viable if he moves in the starting lineup. Um, 
Outside of that, I don't know. Um, I really don't. I don't know what the rotation will look like. I know Caleb Martin's going to get decent minutes regardless and is a fine value, but I think the real standout here for me personally is going to be Gabe Vincent. And then whoever starts, I think you can take a shot on. Um, like if Kyle Lowry starts, sure. If Duncan Robinson starts, sure. Um, but I really like Gabe Vincent. So that'll be Miami. I guess outside chance maybe Oladipo starts. Um, if Oladipo starts... I would think he'd have to play over 20 minutes, and I, I kind of like him for value. So um, we'll see what they do with the starting lineup there. Um, on to Milwaukee. So no Giannis is going to be doubtful here. I really like this team. Drew, Middleton, Brooke, Portis, I think all four look great. They're all just too cheap with no Giannis. Just, they're all going to have huge usage rates. They're all going to play big minutes. I really like all five, or all four. Um, I think my favorite point per dollar is going to be Bobby Portis. Um, phenomenal point per minute guy. The price came down. He should be like a 7K player with no Giannis. So I really like Bobby Portis. I really like Brooke Lopez too. We've seen in the regular season when Giannis, is, when Giannis misses games, Brooke Lopez absolutely destroys. Just gets such a big bump rebounding wise as well. He's going to play close to 40 minutes too. So I really like Brooke Lopez. I really like Middleton. I really like Drew Holiday. If I had to rank them, uh, Portis won. Drew two, Middleton three, Brook Lopez four, but I love them all. I think Grayson Allen's going to have to play a ton of minutes. Solid value. Does have a low four if he's not hitting shots. Joe Ingles, I think we get mid-teens minutes. Fine value, but I think we'll have better value on this slate. And what are we doing here with the pricing? I, I don't understand what this pricing is. So I, you're just going to hear me say I, I absolutely love this team. So I don't care that all these guys had a terrible game last game. I, I really don't. So I really like Ant. I really like Cat. They're, they're just all way, way too cheap. Sign me up. Would I play both together? I think at these prices you can, but not ideal. But I, I think both look great. Rudy Gobert would be the pivot between them, but I think he's fine. Kyle Anderson at 5'9". I think we get around 30 minutes from him, a guy that can stuff the stat sheet. I think he's a pretty safe play now that the price came down, so I do have some interest there. Mike Conley, his minutes were very, very bad last game. Did lose some because the blot only played like 11 first half minutes, which is some concern. But... If we get a game where he goes back to, like, over 30 minutes, he's also too cheap. Um, I'm not going to go to Prince. If they continue to start NAW, he's a solid value. I think we get at least mid-20s minutes from him. Like him quite a bit once again. Um, and I think I like Gabe Vincent more than NAW, but I think they're both good. I'm not going to get to anyone else. Now, if they move Kyle Anderson into the starting lineup at 5'9", I'm playing Kyle Anderson at 5'9 if they start him. I would absolutely love Kyle Anderson if they start him at 5'9 and they go NAW back to the bench. I still think it all would be playable for value, but um, I would really like Kyle Anderson if they start him. So that's Minnesota. Let's move on to Denver. So once again, uh, I like the mid-range too much, but I think Jokic does look good. I think the real standout here is going to be Jamal Murray for me. Was absolutely nuking. I played him last slate. Once again, another play that's just way too cheap. So, really like Jamal Murray. Michael Porter Jr. has been playing phenomenally well. I think he's going to be pretty popular tomorrow. I think he's another solid play. Gordon, probably your pivot off MPJ. A reasonable play. I'm not going to go to Bruce Brown. KCP has to the shots to reach value. And then I'm not playing anyone else. So, let's go over the standouts for me on this slate. So, Anthony Davis. Jaron is not a standout, actually. Butler, so 81, Butler 2, Drew 3, Ant 4, Middleton 5, Jamal Murray 6, Cat 7, Bam 8, Tyus 9, Brooke Lopez 10, Kyle Anderson if he starts 11, Bobby Portis 12, Rui 13, Gabe Vincent 5, 14 and then NAW if he starts 15. So those are the 15 plays on this slate that really stand out to me. So I tried to do my best. I hope this helped you all out and I'll talk to y'all tomorrow.